The Midwest tour, the, the Twin City tour, extrude this, extruder tour. that city yeah i don't know we, anyway they'll come up eventually <laughs> hey everyone it's jay clark over here at fargo 3d printing we're on site with tyler pope here um again at 3d printing ally and we're in front of a fortis 400 uh mc machine so can you tell me about this behemoth of an fdm machine <laughs> so this is uh kind of what started a lot of the uh or all of the fdm printing for um and when these patents expired that's what opened up the door for a lot of the smaller machines uh so it's basically a hot glue gun on cnc control just like the rest of them this one has a temperature controlled oven and when we run ultim the oven temperature is up over 500 degrees the tip temperature is over 700 degrees so you can imagine that you really need a well-built well-insulated machine to maintain those kind of temperatures uh, 700 fahrenheit Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that, 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 that some of our international viewers don't yeah. don't get like, oh wow, oh. that's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's uh, it builds on the uh, build plates, uh, not like um, you don't have to worry about you know hairspray and a lot of good stuff, you know, all the tips and tricks. <clears throat> um, it does have a separate uh, nozzle for support material, so it does use soluble support on, on ABS and polycarbonate, which is really nice because we can wash the support out of cavities and not have to worry about picking it. Okay, and if you do have to pick it, is it is it difficult to pick it out? Uh, the uh, depends on the part, maybe. It depends on the part and the ultimate support material. That's a finger killer. It, it will slice you. So Ooh. okay, <laughs> okay. We try to avoid that as much as we can. So tell me a little bit about the build plate. I know I, uh, there's a couple that we have um, down here. Can you tell me a little bit about the process and like you have some calibration stuff on here? Just. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this. So this is just a polycarbonate sheet that goes into the machine and gets sucked down to a vacuum table. Uh, you can only use one area of the, the build sheet uh, once, and then uh, we save the sheet so we can utilize the rest of it. Um, so it's, it's, it's inexpensive and it's quick uh, to just change these out. <clears throat> uh, the calibration part of it, you actually calibrate the two nozzles together. So you're calibrating your X and Y using the scale here, and then calibrate the Z on the on this square here. And this is what tip is in the machine, so you know that you have the right settings on it. If you try to calibrate with the wrong settings, it goes haywire, and this, this tells you what you did wrong, basically. We've done that a few times. <laughs> uh, but that's the build sheet on this. So ABS and Polycarb use Z sheets, and then Ultim has their own special sheets, which are a little more expensive. So what happens if you do print on the same spot again? Does it not adhere as well, or...? Well, this never comes off, so your tip would actually run into it. It would fold your tip in. Uh, I can show you a tip here in a second, but uh, it would actually fold your tip over, and then you wouldn't be able to extrude, and you get bad parts. So, so it actually melts it right to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first layer of the model material actually sticks to this, this sheet. Uh, it, it's a permit, and then it puts on support material and then builds a part on top of that. So that way you have that layer of separation to get the parts off. Okay. And then do you have uh, some of the Altem one that's a... Yep. They probably don't look too differently, but, but uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't imagine these are $26 versus $6, but they are, but uh, uh, that's what the ultimate sheets look like. And these actually have a rough side versus a, uh, a smooth side. So. Okay. We, <clears throat> we actually 3D print a lot of tooling and fixturing for ourselves. You can see our tip holders here. Uh, they hold everything in place. and. Uh, so here's what the tips look like on a Fortis, and these only last so long. So then you gotta you gotta change them out. So the, each uh, slice has its own tip diameter, and then once it's used on that material, it's dedicated to that material. So uh, that's why we have to keep everything straight. And then we also track the mileage on them. How many cubic inches have, have been through the part? We track those on these pieces of paper that are in here. So we actually plug that into the machine when we change tips so that we know when this tip is worn out and we have to replace it. So when it wears out, is it like the inner diameter of the nozzle starts to go out or what do you typically see with, with that? You don't see it a lot. Uh, I imagine if you doubled the, the mileage, you start seeing some, some uh, yeah, the, the, the diameter would probably start changing and, and start affecting your prints. Um, if you, I mean, I suppose you could lie to the machine and just keep, go, you know, keep going and going and going, but at some point you will end up with bad parts. And for us, it's better to just be proactive, get it changed out, and know that you're going to have good parts every time. And what's the the white that's around the nozzle tip? Is that like a ceramic? Is it a, is it more of like a, a? It's like a Teflon coating, so that the uh, material doesn't stick to it as much. Okay. And do you know what the nozzle diameter actually is for most of these? I do not. Okay. <laughs> um, and then explain the the material. I mean, we got these giant canisters behind us, 
and uh, in the machine here as well. So these are how the Stratus system uh, provides material to the, to the machine. Basically inside here is the same spool that you guys uh, you guys sell. And uh, it's in a, can a canister, so you have uh, dust and packs and everything in there. So it's all sealed up. No humidity affects it. Uh, and then these get loaded into the machine just like this. Now these are the build bays, and these are the support material bays. So if we run out of material on this canister, it'll switch over automatically to the backup canister. So again, continuous uh, production uh, just doesn't stop. And then close it up like that. There you go. Now these are chipped, so the machine knows what material is what, and it knows how many uh, cubic inches have been uh, fed through it, and, uh, and it also knows that it's, it's Stratus's material, not not a secondhand material. Okay. And what's the build volume of this particular machine then? This is 14 by 16 by 16. Uh, the big brother to this machine has a 24 by 36 by 24 inch build envelope. So they can go very, very large or can do a lot of parts. And, and we have some parts from this machine. Uh, so this is a polycarbonate part. This is what happens when the power goes out on you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it shows a good example of the sparse fill on the inside with all the FDM printing does. Uh, this is actually a 13 slice, so this is our thickest slice. But on straight walls, you don't really notice a difference between 10 and 13. And then it goes a lot faster. So we use 13 on big, bulky parts when it's more about tooling and fixturing and it's more about durability and less about surface finish. Uh, same kind of thing on this. So this was 13 slice also, all the way up, and you, you honestly, you can't, you can't tell. So, so in, in microns, what would that be? Oh, I got to do math. Um, <laughs> so 10 is. Um, I have to look at it. Okay, no, no, no worries. <laughs> you can edit that out. And then here's an example of. <clears throat> This is a, a tooling fixture that we did for a customer. Uh, so this shows how you can kind of combine technologies. Uh, we printed everything and then uh, reamed out the holes, put bushings in for locators, and then we have some spring stops here to actually hold the part in place. And what this does is positions a part so they can glue a strap onto a, a plastic part. So uh, this helps them very much in their, uh, their production. Again, just use hex-shaped holes take advantage of the 3d printing as much as you can put the text right into it so you know this is a, this is kind of what i did before you know starting the company was come up with fixtures like this so this is this is kind of my background do you see uh, most of your fdm parts are for jigging fixtures then or do you see some end use parts with this we do see a lot of end use parts with this uh, uh particularly in polycarbonate and abs but um it, it's probably the best for tooling and fixturing just because of the low volume uh uh, nature of it and then it, the durability of it and so like the part that you picked up here what roughly percentage of infill is that compared to that's about 10 or, or 15 percent infill so okay. uh, the, this program works a little different that you, you you pick the spacing and, and a few other things like that you're not giving them a percentage but uh, it's it's not very much okay um i was gonna say something else about that um as far as you know, this machine versus like your your first maker bot, what uh, um, what do you like about going with this bigger machine versus like the like the maker bot, so, like the first ones that you had? So my first paying job on the maker bot was a real good one. It was uh, an outdoor lighting company. They needed some caps for some uh, rectangle tubing, and they needed them the next day. I'm like, this is perfect. I can do this. Went home, designed it up. Printed one out, everything went great. So I put four more on the machine, went to bed, got up the next morning, and the problem with the heated build plates was that that long of a time on there, the parts started to curl and, and just basically ruin the parts. So right then, you realize that if you want industrial-grade parts, you really need an industrial-grade machine. Um, so that's where this one really is the heated chamber is a little better than a heated build plate, and, and it, it builds bigger parts, and this thing's just a tank. I mean, it really is. So... Um, it, the, I learned so much on the MakerBot about, you know, fixing them, dying them in, you know, how to, uh, I made my own extruders and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. But if you want to go with industrial grade parts, you really do need industrial grade machine. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to add about FDM in general, that style of 3D printing? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we're actually going to move over to another machine here. Um, for Fargo 3D printing, this is Jay Clark. And for 3D printing ally, uh, Tyler Pope. Thanks for watching, guys.